Hey, my name is Carl, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make DIY potpourri. Sign up for our summer reading program by visiting the longbeach.beanstack.org or any of our open locations. If you've already signed up for the summer reading, be sure to enter the special code SCARLET in the activity tab of your Beanstack challenge to earn a point for joining us for today's craft. Okay, let's get started. We are going to be making homemade potpourri DIY. It is super simple and super fun to do. Um, potpourri in its original language actually means rotting pot, which I thought was very interesting because it is not, it smells wonderful. Um, so in order to make potpourri, you'll need three basic ingredients. You'll need florals, any type of florals, herbs, anything that smells good to you. Um, and we'll get more into that later. You'll need wood chips. These are actually the same wood chips they use in like hamster cages or pet cages. You can get this at any pet store. You can get a ton of it for like five bucks. Super simple. Um, you'll need some essential fragrances and those are up to you. Right now I have lemon, mint, and tea tree, I think. Um, and last but not least, you'll need a container for your potpourri to go in. Um, I have a mesh bag here. And I like that a lot because it lets the potpourri breathe and you can put it in cabinets and you can put it in your laundry. Um, but you can also choose glass and this can look, look really nice on a coffee table or in a bathroom or in a kitchen or something like that. Okay, so let's get started. You're going to start off with your fresh florals. Um, and it can be a mix of things, just really whatever smells good to you. You want things to have natural scent. Some of the things I use are like orange tree leaves, rose petals, obviously. I think in here we have some pine needles. Um, and you can really get this from basically any public park. As things expire, you want to do responsible foraging and you want to look for things that may be on the ground, things that have fallen. Um, you only want to take enough for you and we never want to take anything from anyone else's private property. So that is what we call responsible foraging. Okay, so I have a mix of stuff in here um, that I got from a walk in the park. And what you're basically going to do is you're going to let this air out. Now, there is a way to bake this. And if you want to bake it low for 200 degrees for a couple hours until all the moisture is out of it, you don't have to wait for your floral to dry. But I didn't want to do that. Normally when I make potpourri, I just put it in an open air container just like so. And I just kind of put everything in there and I, you know, let it dry out. There's no wrong way to do it. You know, I just sort of just let it dry out by a dry, cool place. It takes about a week, maybe two. Um, the reason why we do that is we don't want our potpourri to mold. Um, so we want it to be really dry. We want no moisture to be left in there at all um, before we add in our wood chips, which we are calling a fixative when you're making potpourri. There's lots of things you can use when you make potpourri for a fixative. Basically what a fixative does is it soaks up the oils and the scent and it keeps your potpourri smelling nice much longer than it would if you just put flowers in a bag. Um, so once you have your potpourri in an open air container, you can set that aside and you can come back to this video. Um, but we're going to go ahead and continue and we're going to say we've done our week or our two week time lapse and now we have our dried florals. So once you have your dried florals, it is pretty simple. What you're going to do is you're going to get a second bowl. You're going to pick some out. And again, we're still going to look for things like mold. We're going to look at what we're putting in there because, you know, even if we are very careful, and we try very hard. Some things can still expire. And mold is pretty much anything that is white or filmy or mossy. This one has a little bit, so I'm gonna discard it. Um, and you wanna just be careful that you don't include any of that in your potpourri mix because it's not healthy to breathe in and it also doesn't smell very good. So we're just gonna keep it light and fluffy. As you see, as things dry, they turn brown and they're just really hard that's how you know it's ready there's no moisture in these whatsoever they still smell great though like it still smells very floral and this is just a mix of rose petals and pine leaves and mint leaves and cinnamon 
And I think there's also some lemon zest in here. And I'm not making a lot. Um, because we're only going to make one of these satchels, but once you have everything or you have enough in there, about a cup of florals, um, you can add half a cup of half a cup of your wood chips to the whole mix. And I'm just measuring by eye. It doesn't take an exact measurement. I'm just going to mix that in there. You want it to be mixed pretty well. Okay. So at the end of the day, you should have something that looks kind of like this. And it's nice and fragrant. And what we're going to do is while this smells good by itself, we're going to punch it up a notch. And we're actually going to include a few drops of whatever essential oils that you fancy. Um, so I'm gonna do a mint and tea tree, even though those smell very similar. So maybe I'll do a citrus and mint. And you just want to do a couple drops, maybe five or six of one scent, and then a couple drops of the other. I'm gonna do five and five. And I'm just gonna mix that around a bit Try to keep them in here and really crush down any long pieces that you have. You can break this down with your hands or you can break it down with a tool. You don't want to grind anything up because then, you know, that'll take away from the, the scent and overall aroma, but you can break it down smaller if you want to. Okay. And I'm just going to give that a smell. Yeah, that smells amazing. And what's happening here is that the essential oil is going to be soaked up by those wood chips. And those wood chips, remember, they put them in hamster cages and pet cages. They are going to soak up a lot of the scent and any of the moisture that may be left in there. And now you can't take anything out. You can't take out any essential oil. So you want to be careful. I'm going to go ahead and put in some more mint because if you put in too much, it can be very overpowering at first and then you won't be able to enjoy it right away. You'll have to wait for it to die down. Um, but this way you'll be able to pretty much enjoy it right away. It smells amazing to me. And just like that, we're done. So now you can take your potpourri, you can take your mesh bag. I got this off of Amazon. You can get like a hundred of them for six bucks. And you can stuff your bag with it. You put everything in there so nothing gets lost. And they look beautiful and amazing. And you, they just really bring that scent to whatever they're in. I keep mine in... Um, my shoes, I keep them in my um, dresser, um, especially these mesh ones because they work really well because the scent comes through. For the bathroom though, I um, keep it in a glass jar, a mason jar with the lid off, and I just keep it far away from any water because um, again, we want to avoid water in these. Um, and that's it. That is the whole trick to it. It's that simple. Once you got a full, you just close your mesh bag and boom, we have made potpourri. I hope you enjoyed your time with me. I hope you make some amazing essential oil combinations and I hope that you have fun with it. Um, I'll see you next time. Thanks.